Hello again YouTube. Do you have a Honda Accord with a four-cylinder engine and have battery issues? This may be the video for you. This happens to be a 2003 Honda Accord. That's the first year of the seventh generation. And this one has the 2.4 liter four-cylinder engine. So since this model was introduced in 2003 as the first of the seventh generation Honda Accords and continuing through at least the eighth generation starting in 2008 through 2013, these four-cylinder cars came with a really small battery. The standard issue battery for these four-cylinder cars is the 51R, which is a really narrow, small capacity battery. This particular one says it has 500 cold cranking amps, which, you know, can be adequate in warm weather. Today in the middle of the winter, it's I think 25 degrees right now. We still got remnants of snow on the ground from our big snowstorm two weeks ago. So these small batteries just don't have the capacity or longevity as you would hope. In fact, this particular battery was manufactured in January of 2015, and here we are in February of 2016, and it's kaput. It didn't even make it through the winter. The six-cylinder cars come with a larger battery with a higher capacity and a higher cold cranking amp uh, rating. So the solution here is to upgrade this car to the V6 specification battery, which requires some minor upgrade to the battery hardware. So I went online here and I checked the parts diagram. Here's the uh, the parts for the battery box for the four-cylinder car and here's for the six-cylinder car and the replacement parts we need here is the, uh, the a wider battery box as well as the battery cover a uh, wider plate to go across the top two uh, longer J hooks and the actual ground wire that grounds to the chassis so those are the parts I got here are my new parts from Honda and hopefully you can see these uh, part numbers. I'll also list these in the description below. This is the battery box and its part number. And then the battery cover, its part number. That'll fit down over the new wider battery. And we've got a new wider strap. And there's its part. And I got two J hooks. They're identical. And then this is the ground wire. Let's start by getting the old battery out of here. Remember, as I've said before, always remove the negative battery cable first. Why? Because if you remove the positive ca battery cable first and accidentally short the end of your wrench against something to ground, you get a nice big surprising spark. Remove the negative battery first, then you're not completing a circuit by shorting the positive battery terminal to ground. And there's your battery hold down bracket. We'll take off what they call the battery cover. little dinky battery and this is what they call the battery box now the positive cable can be just popped out of this little channel there and there's our small battery box so you can see this group size 51 R battery it's pretty narrow and really just a small battery for a car now we could compare that old battery to this one, the Group 35 size battery. It's uh, quite a bit wider or deeper. That should have better capacity. It also lists 640 cold cranking amps versus the 500 or the smaller one. All right, let's pull off the old ground wire. So if we compare the old one to the new one, you can see that the new one definitely is a, of a thicker gauge. That can handle more current. So now I want to saw the new one using the old bolt. So I remove this inlet air cover just so we can see a little bit better. Now the new battery box has two pins in the bottom. They fit down into these two holes into the existing tray. It just sits on top of the tray. Just like that, so it won't shift around. 
I'm going to drop in the new battery. That comes the battery cover. Now that has a front and a back. The back has this slot right centered in the middle of it, whereas the front has the slot a little bit toward the right. That goes on the front. Here's the new hold down bar. It also has a front and a back. It's got a little arrow right there that points toward the front. And I've got my new J hooks or J bolts ready to go. I had to transfer the nuts from the old ones. Maneuver these to catch the holes in the tray back there and in the front. Now you really don't want to over tighten these. Just snug them up a little bit just to keep the battery from moving around and coming loose in case of, a, of an accident or something. I'm going to reinstall my air inlet cover now. Get off these protective caps. Now the new posts are nice and clean, but I'm going to clean the terminals here with my battery brush. Start with the positive battery terminal, again so we don't have a risk of shorting out the system. And then the ground. And we're all done. Alright, let's crank it up on the new battery and see how it does. Awesome, I think we're good to go. So if you've got a 7th or 8th generation Honda Accord with a 4 cylinder engine and a small anemic battery, you might consider upgrading to the larger battery from the V6 like we did. It was a relatively inexpensive upgrade. As I said before, I'll list those part numbers down below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.